Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to start practicing designing apps and websites in Figma. So in this video, I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step instructions. You can literally follow click by click. I'll only tell you the stuff that you need to get started designing interfaces. So let's get started. So we're gonna be looking at a tool called Figma and it has a few advantages. One, most importantly for you, it's free to get started if you're working by yourself. Uh, we like using it at AGN Smart because it also has really good collaboration so we can have multiple people working on the same design file at the same time. It's also really fast. It works on any computer, whether you have a Mac or a PC or Linux, whatever you have, it works right in the browser. And it also has a mobile companion app so you can preview your designs on a mobile screen. So there are really no downsides to starting with a tool like Figma. As you're watching the video, if you have any questions about how to do a particular effect in Figma or any comment or something that you wanna recommend, please put it in the comments below. And if you wanna find out more tips about UI and UX, make sure to subscribe to our free newsletter. The link to that is in the description below. And it's a great resource for anyone starting in UI and UX. So this is the website, you just go to figma.com and I'm already signed in, but you can sign up very quickly even with your Google account and get started. But before we jump right into Figma, I wanna show you the way I would recommend to get started. So you just wanna start practicing. Now for that, I'm not gonna ask you to start designing something from scratch because I believe that would be very hard with someone, especially if you're a complete beginner in this space and you have no grounding in design principles and things like that. So the best way for you to get started is actually to copy other designs. And the reason this is so good is because you can see how this design was created so that when you get stuck on something, you can actually see how this person who created this file achieved a particular effect or look inside of Figma. And this is totally fine in the beginning because you're not gonna be uh, selling these, you're not gonna be saying that you designed something when you copied it from someone else. This is just for your own practice and it's a really good way to get started. So as you can see here, this is what Figma looks like after you log in and start a file. And I haven't even shown you how to start a file because I want you to use another file as your starting point as opposed to a blank file. And like I said, we're not gonna cover everything that you can see here on the screen in terms of what all the various buttons do. We're just gonna focus about how you can get started. Now to do that, um, I wanted to start off with a template and what I literally did was I typed into Google Figma resources and I got a bunch of results. I clicked on a few of them and the third one called literally figmaresources.com is a really good one and I have it open here. So when you look at that, you'll find a bunch of free templates, and this is a great thing about Figma, there are a lot of free resources on the web that you can use to start practicing, to incorporate into your designs, so you don't have to start from scratch. And I picked one of these that is a food delivery app UI, and I have it open here. So the way it works with Figma is because it's all web-based, you can literally click this button here that says copy to Figma, and it will copy that file over to your Figma account. Well, first it's gonna open it in a new browser tab where you can see it, and there might be even like other people viewing this file at the same time, but you can see here at the top that it says view only, and we wanna be able to make edits to this. So what we do in this case, when we're looking at someone else's file, is we just click on the name, and then we say duplicate to your drafts. So if you're signed into Figma, it's just gonna create a copy of this file in your own Figma account. And that's exactly what I did. And I have it open in this tab right here. So you can see it no longer says view only like it says in that tab, and I can start editing this. All right, so now we have a copy of that file that we're gonna use as our starting point. So in Figma, as you can see, I can just scroll up and down to see the different screens in this file and I can very easily rearrange them. You'll notice that in the original file, uh, they were placed side by side, and I have more of a vertical arrangement, and I can just do that by grabbing the title and moving it around uh, with my mouse cursor like that. 
I can also zoom in and zoom out with a pinch gesture on my trackpad. That way I can see all of my screens at once or I can zoom in to see a particular screen. So let's say now I wanna start copying this design. What do I do? Well, just to give you the basics, on the left here, I just have um, a bunch of layers. And then when I select an element, I get the settings for that element on the right, okay? So what I wanna do now is create a rectangle like this uh, for my own design. Now this has a specific shape and this is called a frame. So the first tool you need to know about is the frames here where you hit F on your keyboard and anything I press will show here on uh, the bottom left corner. So you know exactly what I pressed uh, to activate a particular tool. And then I can start drawing a size, but now I don't know how to get the exact same size as this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna click on this screen that exists already. And if I look at the frame here and I click on that, it shows me that this is using an iPhone 11 Pro Max, right? So this is a standard size. And what I can do in Figma is I can hit F again to go into the frame mode. And then I can select here from a bunch of templates and I'll select iPhone 11 Pro Max. And then it automatically puts in a frame of the perfect size. So I'll just place that right next to the original frame and I can start copying the design, right? So I can see here that they have a fancy uh, design element here with a purple, but let's keep things simple for now. And let's just assume I just want a purple background, right? So the easiest way I could accomplish this is I could either give this whole frame a background color or I could draw a rectangle um, that's purple, right? That can be in my background. So if I wanna draw a rectangle, I can do that from here. You can see that this is the rectangle tool and it already says like R next to it. So I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard and draw a rectangle, right? So I don't want it to take up, uh, I don't need it to take up the whole screen. This is fine. Now I can see by default, this is purple. Uh, so I'll click on it and see here like I said, whenever I select something, the settings for that element will be on the right. So I'll see here that here's the gray color and I don't want it to be gray. Uh, I want it to be that purple. So I can either try to change things here or I can use the eyedropper. And this is something that you might already know from something like Photoshop, if you've ever used a image editing tool or anything like that. So I'll use that and I'll pick just this color, right? So this is good enough for now. Next, I want to create this card. So this is just another rectangle essentially, right? So I'll just draw another rectangle here and try to have it to be approximately the same height. So I'll notice here that, well, the color is different and I don't have the fancy rounding. So let's start with the color since we already covered that. And this looks like a very light gray. It's not white because I can see that the circle is white. So what I can do quickly is again, I'll grab the eyedropper tool, select here. So now I have the same color that's on the left here, right? But I can notice also that the corners here, it has these nice rounded corners that I don't have. And for that, right under the uh, position and the dimensions, so if I change this, this is just changing uh, the X coordinates and I'm just gonna do Command Z or Control Z if you're on a Mac to go back. Uh, and these are the Y coordinates and by the way, um, I can change these by clicking and dragging. You, you see the cursor turns to this sideways arrow and I can click and drag left and right to change these values or I can type them in, right? Uh, I can also change the width and the height. And here is the angle for rotation, but what I wanna focus on right now is the corner radius, right? So this is that rounding effect. And so with the corner radius tool, I can adjust how rounded these corners are. Now I'm getting closer to the look of that original file, right? Uh, but I can see on the bottom that I have these rounded corners, but I don't want them because the original one doesn't have it. Now there is a fix for this in Figma, but the easy and cheating solution would be to just extend this beyond the frame and then it's hidden outside the frame of the phone screen, right? But if you wanna do it the correct way, you would come to the corner radius 
and you would click on independent corners. And what this allows you to do is set each corner independently. And so if I change this to zero, you'll see that it's no longer rounded. And if I wanna keep the top rounded, but not the bottom, then I just change the bottom ones, right? And now it looks correct. Now, the next thing would be to create the circle. And the way to create a circle is from the shapes menu, you have an ellipse, which you can also do with the letter um, O on your keyboard. Now, by default, you'll be able to draw um, kind of a circle with any uh, aspect ratio, but if you want it to be a perfect circle, all you need to do is hold shift on your keyboard as you're dragging, and it'll just be a perfect circle. Now, if I wanna find out the exact dimensions of this, I can click once and I can see on the left that I've selected the whole group. I can double click again and I still see that I haven't selected the circle. I keep double clicking and now I have the circle and it shows me that it's 104 by 104. So I'll go here and change the dimensions um, of my circle here and I'll type 104 and now I have something with the exact dimensions. Now I wanna know where to place this, right? How high should it be like? Because I don't know a lot about spacing right now and I just wanna copy what the person did. So again, I'll double click here, double click again. And now I've selected this and I wanna know how far it is from that edge. And the way I can do that is I hold option on a Mac or alt on a Windows computer and that will show me the distance from all of the neighboring elements uh, if I hover over the, uh, the text here, you can see it's showing me it's 24 pixels. Um, if I select the card, it's showing me the distance between all of the edges here, right? And so what I wanna know is that it's 64 pixels away from the top. And so I select my circle and then I can start while holding option, I can hit the down arrow and now I have 64, right? And I can see that left and right is perfectly center and Figma will help you do this. If you move something, it will snap to the center as you can see here. And now I have my circle in the middle, right? Let's quickly change the color. Now we're experts at this. Uh, this is just white, so this is very easy. Uh, now there's also here an icon. Uh, and icons are things that you'll often need when designing mobile interfaces because you're, you'll want to have an icon for a home screen or something like that. And you can literally Google free Figma icons. And again, you'll have uh, a result from Google that says here are 460 free icons. And this is also a Figma file. So I can literally come here. This is a Figma file I just hit the interface here by right clicking, you can hide the interface. And I can come here and select an icon. Let's say I wanna copy this one. I literally just use the copy shortcut, which is Command C or Control C. Uh, I come back to my file and I paste that element, right? So now I have that icon and Figma also helps you with positioning. It automatically centers things as you're moving them around. So if I resize this, uh, without any modifier keys, uh, it might distort the image. So I'll do Command Z and what I'll do instead is hold Shift like we did with the circle. That way it'll always resize perfectly. And what I can also do is that if I already have this centered, I can hold both Shift and Option or Alt on a PC and start resizing and it will resize from the center out, right? So this will just save you a little bit of time, right? So now I have my icon, or I can alternatively just grab this icon, double click, double click, and double click again. And that now I've selected this icon. I can delete the one that I already have and paste it here. And now I have that same icon. So it's really important for you to have a place to go to to find icons. And this one that I found here, I literally found it in three seconds. So I'm sure there are other free icons because this might not have everything that you need. Um, and another thing that would be very handy for you is somewhere to get free images to use in your designs. Because as you can see here, uh, those will come in very handy in a lot of applications. And so let's say that I wanted to get an image here instead of this 
uh, blank color since I can't do this fancy effect yet and we don't wanna focus on fancy effects just yet, right? So one good website is called Unsplash and I just typed delivery in search and I found this image here. And with Figma, it's very easy to paste in an image. Uh, literally all I have to do is come to Unsplash, right click on the image, then I can copy the image, go back to my Figma file, I select the background so that it pastes it over this particular area, and I hit Command V or Control V if you're on a PC. And then I can just reposition this. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about you know, perfect positioning or fancy effects, but this is how easy it is to get an image in, right? Now let's quickly finish um, this screen. Now the next thing that I need is text here that says non-contact deliveries. And the way I get text is through the T icon here. I can just hit T on my keyboard and hit text. So non-contact deliveries, right? Now obviously this doesn't look the same as the other image. There are a few things I wanna find out. First is the size of the text. So to do that, double click, double click. And then I look here at the settings. So one, I can see it's using SF Pro Display. Uh, so you may or may not have the font locally on your machine that the person is using, uh, but chances are you will. And I can see that the size is 34 and it's bold, right? So I'm gonna apply the same setting. So I'm gonna click here, type 34, and I'm gonna use SF Pro Text. Uh, I'm just typing it, but you can also select it here. And I'm gonna change this to bold, right? Now, this doesn't look exactly the same because this is over two lines. And by default, Figma will just have the text be as long uh, or as wide as the text is long. And I can change that by just dragging this to resize it. And this gets me the effect that I want. I just need to center it now. And I wanna know how far away it is from that circle, right? So we saw this already. I'll just double click, double click, and hold option, and I can see it's 24 pixels away. And I'll just nudge this up a little bit, and now it's perfect. And I think the color um, is different here. So again, I'll hit the color, hit the eyedropper, and I think this is dark purple, and now I have that color, right? Excellent. And I think this might be doing some other effects to the text, but we're not gonna worry about it right now. Uh, we're gonna need to create something that looks like um, the paragraph right here, and so I'll hit the T icon again, and by default it's gonna use the same settings as I used before. Just for speed, I'll copy this text here so you don't have to wait for me to type it out. And as you can see, it was very wide and I can resize this. And I can also see here how I can find out how wide this is by double clicking on it and then seeing, okay, the width is 374. So I go back here, type 374 and that's exactly the same width and I'll just center it and I'll see how far away this element was from the top, 25. So if I nudge it up using my arrow keys, now it's right. And as you can see, the screen is coming along and you can do this as someone who's never used Figma before or any design tool. Now I need a button, so for that, uh, I'm gonna hit the rectangle key again on my keyboard and just do this, right? And then I'm gonna cheat and look at the dimensions of the, this button. So 374 again and 56. So I'm gonna do that, 374 and 56. And now I'm gonna center it and see how far it is from the element above it. So that's 48, but my element is different here. So that's okay. You don't need to worry about that. So what I can do is have the height here adjust automatically to the text. And I think I have an extra line. That was the reason. So now I can, let me remember what this number was again. 
So this is 48 and 48 here would be like this. All right, perfect. So now I'm gonna grab the color and let me see if I can also steal the corner radius. So this shows eight, perfect. I'll just type eight here. Now I need some text to go on top and let me see what the settings for that are. So SF Pro Text, semi bold, oh, sorry. And 15, so I'll do that real quick. Oh, it actually copied it over because I started editing that. And so I say order now, all caps, and I'll just center this and make it white. So that's very easy, I don't need to grab that color. And now I'll just copy this. And you can copy an element real quick either by selecting it, doing Command C, Command V, and it'll paste it right over it. So if I move it here, you can't see it because it's white on white. Or I can hold Option or Alt, and that'll also duplicate the element. So this is a little bit faster. Let me change the color of that to be the color of the dismiss. So I'll just grab that from here, all right? And move it under the button, change it to dismiss. The last thing I wanna see is how far away it was. So that was 32 and, oh, sorry, no, from the button, it's 32 and there. Now you've created something that's very, very close to the original design. As you can see, starting with a template that's already in Figma allows you to cheat in the beginning and copy over elements. And you should just look for free resources that have designs of mobile apps, of web apps, and start copying these and see how you can recreate these elements. And over time, you'll start to internalize all of the principles that are in place, like how to space text elements far apart. You'll be able to do it just by looking at it more or less. Of course, at some point, it's really good if you start learning about the actual theory of design, but this is a way to get started without being bogged down. So maybe you can switch, you'll do a little bit of practice, a little bit of theory and start applying what you learn. But this is one way to get started without knowing any theory and just by copying existing designs. Now the next step for, from this would be to start designing things in Figma when you're comfortable with it and you can pretty much recreate everything that you see. So you might see an app that you like that's not already created in Figma. So maybe you look at Instagram or any other app that you like or TikTok or anything and you can start designing that in Figma. And when you get stuck, you Google it, you find out how this fancy effect was created, or you can Google, can I do you know, X or Y in Figma? Can I play a video in Figma, for example, if I wanna do something like TikTok? And you'll start to familiarize more and more with the tool. And the step after that is to look at an app that you think could be improved. So maybe your banking app is really, really bad and you've always wanted to improve it. Well, now you know how to use Figma enough to start putting together a new design. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Please let us know in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions about next steps, something you got stuck on. And if you want more tips and tricks about UI and UX, we have a free newsletter that you can subscribe to. The link is in the description below. And it's very helpful for someone who's just starting out like you because we go out and we read all of the news uh, about UI and UX and we just send you the best stuff. So if you're just starting out, make sure to subscribe to the newsletter and I'll see you in the next video.